My name is Lynn James, uh, born and bred in Townsville. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about my grandfather, Edward John Pardon, uh, who served in World War I. This was the old homestead granddad lived in a Mount Leeshan outside Charters Towers. This is the way they travelled between Mount Leeshan and Charters Towers in the late 1800s. Granddad was born in Charters Towers in 1894 and enlisted in Charters Towers to serve. Um, his records show initially he was rejected because he had varicose veins which probably tied in with him being a woodcutter and doing heavy lifting. Um, second generation woodcutter. In 1916 certainly they needed reinforcements so Granddad was accepted and off he went. He left here in January 1917, sailed to England, and then was sent across to France. He served as a stretcher bearer. So undoubtedly, Grandad saw a lot of sights we prefer not to see. Because of he, he was so strong lifting timber, he was able to go out under fire to rescue a fellow Aussie. The story goes that he placed the wounded man on his shoulders and made it back safely, thank goodness. For that he was awarded the military medal. This was the actual letter that was sent to Brandad's dad in, in Mount Leeshan, just advising that he was awarded the military medal. The military medal there. I congratulate you on the gallant act by which you have won the military medal. And this one here was actually, our Grandad did get gassed in, when he was in France and he was sent to England to recuperate. And this letter, Buckingham Palace, 1918. The Queen and I wish you Godspeed, a safe return to the happiness and joy of home life with an early restoration to your health. A grateful mother country thanks you for faithful service. Signed by King George. Granddad never spoke of the war. I think Obviously, it had a lasting impact. There was no counselling following World War I or World War II. And uh, yes, he was known to frequent the local hotel. He was 22. And surprisingly, since I researched Grandad's history, as a child, I always thought he was such a big man. But uh, it turns out he was five foot seven and only 121 pounds. So he must have just been all muscle to be able to physically pick up firstly timber and then a wounded soldier. This is uh, Grandad, as I remember him, holding my brother when he was born. That would have been in 48. That's Townsville, that's in West End where they raised the nine children. We love Grandad. I remember him, they had the hurricane lamps we didn't have electricity on. I can still see him then pumping up the hurricane lamp to give us more light. As children, we'd love to sit there and Grandad had his big cup of tea and he would pour it into his saucer for the cooling effect and then drink the tea. That was really something for us to sit there and watch Grandad. He had a special spot outside the house, a little corner where his shaving mirror used to hang and his big leather. Um, belt for the razor and we stood there and we watched him with the um, cutthroat razor sharpening it up and having his shave. This is actually Grandad's truck. He apparently built the cab himself and that's the size of the timber that they used to load. They bring in firewood, they'd supply the railway refreshment rooms, they would take timber to the troops that were stationed at the showgrounds for World War II. And they also cut the house blocks or the house stumps 
My dad is the third, third generation woodcutter. And we would just love watching Grandad and my dad on the crosscut saw. It was really something to watch them cutting the timber. When World War II was breaking out here, um, my dad tells me that he and his dad were working at the aerodrome, the Garbutt airstrip. Um, a friend of theirs, Billy Bedell, and that's who the suburb of Bedell is named after, he had the big tip truck and they would load the <coughs> dirt and crushed metal into the back and take it to the airstrip. And Dad can remember having to operate this by hand to empty the big tip truck, just to wind her up. And Grandad and others were there shoveling it. And what they were doing is making the mounds to protect the planes at the airport. And of course, as we know, the planes did come across. And my dad tells me that he and Grandad stood in the backyard of their West End home, not down in the trench with the other family, and they watched the Japanese planes go across Townsville. So that was really something. And then, of course, my dad went off to fight them in the islands to protect Australia. <laughs>